Praise the Lord. Good night. Greetings in the mighty name of Jesus. It is a great joy and privilege once again, beloved and friends, to be here this, uh, this Friday night to minister the word of God. I trust the Lord everyone is in good health and happiness regardless of our situation in the world. As I always say, beloved and friends, that we are living in a very sick and sinful world. But Jesus Christ himself promised, he says, Lo, I'm with you always. I will never leave you nor forsake you even unto the end of this world. Isn't that awesome? So tonight isn't that great isn't that mighty isn't that majestic that God himself promised to be with us in every situation in every circumstances in every trial in every testing in every storm in every decision making he promised to be with us he says in his words a thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right hand but no evil shall befall thee and no plague shall come neither dwelling tonight beloved and friends in hallelujah i release that very special blessing upon your life tonight and i pray that god will bless you physically spiritually socially materially financially educationally every area of your life and whatever you do with your two hands it shall prosper in jesus precious and gracious and wonderful name hallelujah praise god thank you jesus let me break it down tonight. I pray that God will bless your homes. God will bless your marriage. God will bless your children. He will bless you on the job. Give you wisdom. Give you knowledge. Understanding. Leading a direction of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God. And that the Spirit of the Antichrist. To make wise decision. In your planning and decision making. In Jesus name. Father God tonight I cover everyone. Under the precious blood of Jesus tonight. And I build a hedge around your life. For the blood of Jesus is so efficacious. And the blood of Jesus is so powerful. The blood of Jesus is a repellent that destroys every yoke and every bondage and every fetter and every evil and every work of darkness. Tonight, every spirit of witchcraft, obia, demonic forces, evil blights, generational curses, where the first, second, third, or fourth generational curse, I break and I destroy under the precious blood of Jesus for whom the Son set free is free indeed you are free tonight in Jesus name hallelujah Jesus said in his words healing is the children's bread and the first covenant God make with man was the covenant of healing for he was wounded for our transgressions he was bruised for our iniquities the chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes I am healed you are healed we are healed in Jesus name tonight praise God God, Father God, tonight I pray you dip mortal man, yes, in the river or with liquid fire of the Holy Spirit, anoint mortal man, anoint my lips, anoint my tongue, burn out every sickness, every pain, every disease, every infirmities, every evil, and every work of darkness. As I minister your words tonight, your words will go forth with dunamis and power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit that many will be healed. Many will be saved, many will be blessed, many will be delivered, many will be set free from all manner of sicknesses and pain and disease and infirmities and evil and every work of darkness tonight, my friends. In these uncertain times, we are at a pivotal moment and a pivotal time, my friends. We see what is happening. Yes, I pray for America that they will find a speaker for the house in Jesus' name and they will take my advice in Jesus' name. Jesus, then be in these uncertain times here at the poverty. Yes, my friends, a poverty moment. Yes, a poverty moment, my friends, in 2024 in Bible prophecy. Here are four trends to watch for is more than just a sermon tonight. It's a call to pay attention to the prophecies aligning with our world today. My friends and beloved, every day we see signs from scriptures coming to life for us as 2024 approaches. Yes, the importance of these prophecies grows. We can't ignore the signs tonight. Yes, trends number one, trend number one. 
upon the rise of the global unity global unity and governance as the world becomes more interconnected through technology trade and geographical yes we may see more attempts for from stronger global alliances and possible even more towards a more on the on the defined global governance systems scriptures reference like revelation chapter 13 verse 7 it speaks of a world power that has authority over every tribe yes of people language and nations yes my friends what you need to look for is a trend in the constitution of global unity and governance today preparing and priming the world stage for a significant prophetic prophetic figure my friends hallelujah the antichrist himself this wave of integration is not just a mere coincidence it it's a vital, vital step of in laying down the groundwork for an emergence of the global leader that is, is to come. My friends and beloved Antichrist, as you witness the formation of alliance and unions of countries, beloved and friends, it's crucial to remember tonight that this is not mere geo geopolitics at play but the manifestation of ancient prophecies. Scriptures has long indicated that one man is prophesied to come and lead the world welding, welding, welding on parallel influence and controlling a vast global system. Beloved and friends, everything you observe in this world is in connect, interconnected. Not no even stands alone. Nothing exists in isolation tonight. As you watch history unfold, remember, my friends, everything is interconnected. Every war, every rumor of war, each alliance, and every disagreement, even in the house, are part of God's prophetic timetable. Yes. My friends, the world is not in chaos. Hallelujah. While we might be taken back by current events, God isn't, my friends. All events are moving in line with God's prophetic timeline tonight. While on earth, Jesus spoke of things to come. Hallelujah. And the book of Revelation provided for the insights tonight so when you observe current world events or watch the news always ask yourself beloved and friends how does this relate to biblical prophecy how does it connect to the return of our lord nothing nothing absolutely nothing happens in isolation everything that happens is a part of god's prophetic prophetic timeline tonight revelation Revelation chapter 13 verse 7 and it was given unto him to make war with the saints yes and to overcome them beloved and friends and power was given him over all kindreds kindreds and tongues and nations beloved and friends here in Revelation chapter 13 verse 7 such an influential figure will require an infrastructure that transcends borders and contravention systems and here we see another trend to watch for my friends global economic systems and digital currencies digital currencies the rise of digital currencies has been metrics call for growing louder for the establishment of a global digital currency streamlining transactions and creating my friends a universal accepted economic system beloved and friends the shift away from traditional physical cash instead it's just about efficiency or security concerns it's a reflection of the world Garrel movement towards unity in all, in all sectors, including economy. A, a undefined digital currency will, in essence, my friends, pave pave the way for this photo leader to have an un, unprecedented grip on global on global commerce. Yes, as these trends continue to unfold in 2024 and beyond, my friends, is essential to view them not just as isolated uh, geographical or economic events uh, but as significant pieces uh, fitting in the vast uh, 
jigsaw puzzle of end times beloved and friends end time prophecy by observing these patterns believers can discern the times and prepare their hearts and minds for what lies ahead in the prophetic in the prophetic yes my friends calendar tonight my friends the trend number two technological advances and the mark of the beast itself yes if one were to step back out of a century or even two centuries the realms of science and technology as we did today my friends will appear almost alien this is tries we taking in in a relatively short span I'm nothing short I'm nothing short of miraculous from the interception of random material machines to the sophisticated digital world digital world we are deeply enriched in today's mankind technology journey has been a testimony of innovation curiosity and a relentlessness pursuit my friends of the unknown tonight revelation chapter revelation chapter 13 6 to 17 and he calls it all both small and great rich and poor born and free my friends hallelujah to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads and that no man might able to buy or sell save he had the mark the mark of the name of the beast or the number of his name beloved and friends revelation chapter 13 verse 16 and 17 paints a picture that for ages ages was seen as a distant almost etic eternal policy prophecy it speaks of an era where individuals will be a mark a mark on their right hand or in their foreheads yes a mark that becomes the the, 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 the meter of economic transactions yes a prerequisite without which one cannot engage in the fundamental acts of buying or selling beloved and friends true unimaginable in in the years today we see rapid tech, tech tech technology evaluation makes this biblical imagery increasingly possible my friends one cannot overlook the staggering piece at with the pace of which technology is moving forward task and innovations that once looked decades decades if now centuries to come to fusion, to fusion are now re realized in me years or even months my friends we live in an era where dreams of your are the re realities of today beloved and friends impossibilities of the past like a world system monitoring every transaction you partake in have transformed into into possibilities such a level of surveillance and unthinkable and technology impossible 200 years ago my friends however it is today a reality a reality in the structure and required for level of power control and surveillance that the antichrist needs for revelation chapter 13 1 23 and 17 to be realized it's already in in place my friends in in 2024 and city peter this trend to persist yes my friends uh, recently yes a friend recently told me that he logged into his car up and was uh, astonished to discover it has strict track every single drive he had undertaken in the past three years the duration of each drive in america where he stopped at the length of each stop my friends this experience on the score for him the depth of surveillance we are subject to currently my friends the very infrastructure the antichrist will leverage to do dominate the world is being established around us, my friends. Given the pace of technological advancement, we can expect to inch closer and closer and closer to reality described in Revelation. In Revelation 13, over the years, my friends, various scholars, technologians have made imaginary calculation of to identify the Antichrist through this number, through his number six six. 
6 yes my friends hallelujah however my friends i must confess that no one truly knows the meaning of this number tonight the name not the less believers on or during during the time will undoubtedly understand it clearly beloved and friends in the grand or timeline of biblical prophecy and technology as trends of biotech advancement digital finance and individual surveillance inter interwave a pattern tonight emerges a pattern that aligns easily with the prophecy of the mark of the beast yes beloved as we navigate this technological advancement age in crucial to observe my friends reflect and discern tonight trends trend number three trend number three tonight uh, apostasy and fairly falling away from truth faith the caution for the caution for my friends 2024 in recent times we witness uh, tremors within the very foundation of faith uh, the undripping Christianity Paul Paul programmed words in 2nd Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 3 cautioning of a falling away of adversity and providing more relevant today than ever my friends the term apostasy derived from the greek word apostasia yes carries a profound meaning that includes my friends departure falling away falling away defection revolt revolt in second thessalonians chapter 2 verses 3 isn't merely about a causal departure yes it's a, it signifies a vast number of people turning away from god it's not just a few individuals or a minority it's an unprecedented global rebellion against god himself we are not seeing this in our time Times, beloved and friends I've never witnessed anything like it over my lifetime yes the world has undergone significant changes beloved and friends I observe a moral shift of biblical proportions and the world seems to hate what is holy and righteous while embracing sin embracing sin and the unholiness they are churches today today that openly permits pastor to live in sin and that celebrates and glorify unrighteousness by 2024 you witness more of this greater falling away my friends across nations there's an increasing number of backsliders in churches the fervent many once had had for the Lord has diminished the love of many for the Lord has grown cold for the Lord the church has crept into the world yes and the world has crept into into the church beloved and friends allow me to repeat this statement tonight because it is profound statement and a true statement the church has crept into the world and the world has crept into the church my friends this is our job as believers to make sure you are not conform to this world yes beloved and friends as a believer tonight it's essential to ensure that you aren't swayed by worldly influences the world will try to mold you yes to its beliefs and ideologies but your beliefs tonight shall align with the word of the living God the Bible my friends this world will try to make you accept things that God doesn't condone tonight if it doesn't promote holy and righteous living my friends but endorse the doctrine of heroism the world pushes you towards Immediate satisfaction and transcend pleasures, beloved and friends. The religion of this world is one of the flesh. Yes, it is one of indulgence of the flesh. It might make you feel you have the right to sin. Yes, to portraise personal interests over others, beloved and friends, or to continuously indulge in sin because it's pleasing. It's pleasing, but remember such influences will steal you further further from God teachings there is a troubling trend tonight emerging from the world and sweeping and creeping into the churches where people claim I am a Christian 
but I don't follow, I don't follow, I don't follow the Bible. This assertion, my friends, is contradictory. It's a liking to say I'm a vegetarian. I'm a vegetarian, but still eat chicken, chicken and beef. Isn't that so? Such ideas from the world infiltrate the church are concerning tonight. You can't be a Christian and disregard the Bible. We are witnessing a significant departure from faith, my friends, right in front of us. It's essential to recognize that, uh, that many have already been led astray and many more on the verge. On the verge, your devotion to God should be intentional. Yes, my friends, your decision to follow Jesus must be deliberate. Yes, one, you need to constantly choose to trend a narrow path. Yes, for, for few, find even as we witness, we witness this greater apostasy. Yes, unfolding and sure it doesn't encompass you. Cling to your feet tonight and adhere to some doctrine and stay true to the teachings of the Bible, my friends. 2024 beckons with promise, but it also brings challenges. It brings challenges. The church responsibility is not just to guard against apostasy, yeah, apostasy, but to actively promote some doctrine, ensuring that the faith once delivered to the saints remains unoccupied yes and on 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 diluted trend number four moral declare and shifts of societal values and on a must trend for 2024 my friends the fabric of society is woven by volumes norm and norms and morals that holds communities together then the trends weaken or change direct society inventively undergo transformation as we approach 2024 the gradual shift away from tradition biblical teachings and values as described in Paul's second letter to Timothy my friend second Timothy chapter 31 verse 5 is becoming more evident more evident with selfishness pride blaspheme and a loss of natural affection on the rise my friends it's uh, imperative to knowledge and address uh, this moral decay this moral decay one of the most glaring signs uh, of the shift uh, is the alarming rise in selfishness uh, more than ever we live in an era we live in an era of me my first my friends uh, the biblical warning of men becoming lovers of themselves Selves seems hauntingly relevant to the my friends from husbands and wives they parterize their desire above their families to the celebrity celebrity pastor phenomena where the leaders become more prominent than the teachings of Jesus Christ yes the spotlight on self is binding us to the needs of others yes my friends in a few religion that is the forming the religion of self, the religion of self and the religion of pleasure, the religion of pleasure isn't new my friends falling humanity has always been drawn to it today yes my friends many worship at the altar of pleasure we live in an era dominated by pleasure seekers yes my friends rather than God seekers Seekers an era that embraces the mantra eat, drink, eat, drink, and be merry for tomorrow. For tomorrow, we 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 die. That's the mantra. The religion of pleasure is really the worship of the flesh. Yes, my friends, we must be vigilant because our very nature is attracted to pleasure, including the fleeting delights sin offers. Yes, none of us are immune to this. Lord, I am tired of Christians who attempt, attempt to pretend that there is no pleasure associated with sin. There is a pleasure that comes with sin. Here, the man of God tonight, there is a pleasure that comes with sin. That fleshly man longs for. Don't let anyone lie to you in believing that there is no pleasure in sin. Yes, there is pleasure in fornication. Yes, in adultery. Yes, in sexual 
sexual immorality. There is satisfaction in sowing discord, in seeking revenge. Yes, revenge, drugs, and alcohol too often their own forms of pleasure. Yes, sin is in its, in its many forms can be in, in enticing. But before we continue, my friends, let me share a verse with you in 1 Timothy 56. But she that liveth in pleasure is dead. She that liveth in pleasure is dead. Did you hear me? She that liveth in pleasure is dead already while she liveth. Yes, my friends, but she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth. Yes, my friends, an ungodly person who is living the life of pleasure is alive, but as, as good as dead, since they are not living for God Almighty, the pleasure pleasure of sin never lasts my friends the pleasure of sin deceives becomes it never lasts hallelujah the pleasure of sin always attempts to make you want more and more and more and more and more the world is going to worship at the altar of pleasure yes my friends in 2024 the religion of pleasure is selfish yes it pushes you to put your sinful desires above the well-being and the future of your loved ones beloved and friends fall fall in love with your family put them before pleasure my friends tonight fall in love with your children put them before pleasure tonight Think about how your sin can destroy your family tonight. Think about how your sin will cause a division in your family. Pleasure can pull you away from your responsibilities. It can pull you away from duties. Yes, as a husband or a wife tonight, fall in love with your husband or your wife. Yes, fall in love with your children tonight. They are worth more than the pleasure, the pleasure of sin. The pleasure of sin, my friends, is deceptive. It will deceive you into thinking you can live a double life. You can't. You can't. You really, you really can't tonight, my friends. What secret pleasure do you have tonight? What secret pleasure do you have that that your husband or wife or family knows nothing about tonight it will destroy you your sin is deceptive sin is destructive number number the third numbers 20 32 23 be sure your sin will find you out be absolutely certain that your sin will find you out be sure your sin will find you out my friends in conclusion tonight as we move towards the need to be vigilant has never been greater greater as we stand on the groups of 2024 less than three months two and a half months a trend of global unity technological advancement apostasy and moral decay are more than mere observations tonight they serve as a cautionary signpost urging us to, to reflect and discern and act based on our convictions while the world may veer towards a new order yes my friends believers must find strength in their faith and scripture we must remain steadfast steadfast nourishing our relationship with God and enforcing the foundations of our beliefs my friends let us remember tonight this word tonight my friends God bless you richly it has been a great joy and privilege tonight to be here to minister the word of God God bless you richly I'll see you in the next session by the grace of God in Jesus precious and gracious and wonderful name definitely I will pray for you in the next session in Jesus name God bless you richly I love you very much in the love of God do have a sweet night Chris in Jesus precious and gracious and wonderful name amen and amen praise God thank you Jesus hallelujah amen praise God